So today on the Pro 1200, we're going to discuss how to set up the 2000 series early riser planters within the Pro 1200. The steps we're going to take and the segments of the video we're going to take here today are a brand new planter setup, a pre-season setup, a pre-field start setup, starting the planter in the field and monitoring the planter, shutting down the planter, and reviewing diagnostics and troubleshooting within the planter. When you receive a brand new 2000 series early riser planter that is going to be operated through the Pro 1200 display, you'll find that the planter, when it's plugged in and the display is powered on, loads into the display's universal terminal, which is typically located by default on run screen 7. Here we've relabeled run screen 7 to be UT to make it easier to recognize. For a brand new planter setup, what we will access is the three bar menu within the Pro 1200 UT display of the 2000 series planter object pool. Inside of the main menu, you'll notice we have four icons, a wrench, a caliper, a stethoscope, and a circular arrow. The wrench can be used to do primarily your brand new planter setups that once set, you rarely have to come back in and modify again. The first menu you'll notice is planter setup. Inside of the planter setup, we'll see all of our different configurations on the planter that are the options that are included, such as My2150 has a bulk fill system, it has a liquid fertilizer system, it has markers and alternator and bulk fill lights. These are options that you will leave selected as on or off regardless of what you're using in the field. For example, when I'm planting soybeans and I'm not using my liquid fertilizer system, the system is still installed on the planter, so I'm still going to leave my liquid fertilizer control as on, meaning the planter still has that system. It's just not being used in our field startup. Within the next menu of the wrench is measurement setup. This measurement setup helps the planter understand the distance between the hitch and the application point of the seed on the planter. Some planters will also have a hitch type, such as my 2150 is a semi-mount two-point hitch. Some of those planters do come in a drawbar hitch configuration which would be selected here. The application control menu beneath the wrench is going to allow me to set up my seed drives and my liquid drives. Once this is performed once, like these other menus, it's something that doesn't need to be touched again. My planter is a 16 row and regardless of number of rows on the planter, seeding will always be divided into four different drive sections. The way we determine how many rows go in each drive section is to take your total number of rows divided by four and enter it here. So you can see I have four rows per drive section. As I click on to seed, you'll notice I also have a liquid fertilizer set up which allows me to indicate how many rows are being supplied fertilizer for each liquid section. On all 2000 series planters, we arrange our liquid fertilizer into three sections controlled by three sectional valves. On my planter, I have six rows on the wing being fed by valve one, four rows in the center section being fed by valve two, and six row units on the last section being fed by valve 3. Next we have our customizable settings menu which actually brings us into additional menus where we can modify various settings for the planter. These settings all have default values within them that are typically and rarely changed so once you've set them once at a new planner setup, you typically don't need to return in and set them. Things like jump start control, alarm and beep settings for warnings for seating, for example. Uh, 
seed information thresholds for your advanced seed information seeding data. Those all have defaults that are rarely changed, but do be aware that they are there. One important aspect that you do need to select and customize within here is the speed selection. For the planter, you will have three or four different speed selections that you can choose. First, you have tractor ISO speed, which is the tractor sharing speed information with the planter automatically. Second is a advanced and typically non-used speed source called ISO speed that is sent from the display back to the implement. Currently that feature is not activated and running in my display, of my Pro 1200 display, so the implement is not receiving that speed. For diagnostic and troubleshooting purposes, we have a manual speed input selection, which can be selected for manual diagnostics. If I do choose that manual speed for diagnostics stationary, I do have to click on the right side to enter a manual speed. And lastly, while not shown here, there are also planter wheel speed sensors that are available. This planter does not have it, and therefore I don't have them configured in my planter setup, so I do not see the speed selection here. For our purposes, we are going to maintain the, the typical tractor ISO speed. And finally, implement setup adjustments, similar to several of the other menus, these are defaults that are typically not changed for operation. Uh, so once they are set on a new planter setup, they typically are not modified again. And finally, we have a calibration settings button underneath of our wrench. For a new planter setup, this is important to access and perform three different calibrations for the planter. Once these calibrations are performed, typically they are not needed to be modified again, such as the frame calibration, which tells the planter different things about frame position, such as start plant and stop plant as you raise and lower your planter in the field. Gyro calibration and load cell calibration aid us with curve compensation and downforce operation. Once performed, typically do not need to be performed again, but be aware that they are here in case you do need to reaccess them.